Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 115. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Robert Mackey's dug up DOS games backslash board backslash Tom Toy P1. Okay, so we had to come across something like, uh, wow, it's a lot of executable files. Ah, uh, okay. So I already kind of know what we're up for, what we're in for here, because the directory name is Tom Toy, which suggests to me that this is going to be related to Tommy's Toys. This is something I've been meaning to get to on Ancient DOS games, because there is a massive, and I mean seriously massive, amount of software that's come out of this Tommy's Toy lines. And the part of the reason I haven't done an ADG on it is because, well, <laughs> there's just so much to cover. It's kind of daunting, really. But, yeah, so it looks like we have a bunch of those Tommy Toys games right here from the looks of it. Um, geez, where to start? Um, let's, well, I don't want to keep saying um all the time, so let's just run the toy pack one thing, because that looks like it might be, okay, it's just a read, uh, read me for it. So, hello, Earthlings, this is Tommy. I'm an alien from outer space, and I design neat software toys and games for IBM PCs and compatibles for Earthling kids of all ages from 8 to 250. That means if you're 7 years old, this software does not suit you. Actually, that's a fun, kind of funny thing, because I think I was seven when I first played a Tommy's Toys game. <laughs> uh, this is a toy pack of 15 neat software toys. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so I'm not going to look at all 15 of these right now, because that would take forever. <laughs> so let's just choose three of them. And then, whenever I finally get around to doing a Tommy's Toys ADG video, then we can go through the whole shebang. Because trust me, there's a lot. <laughs> like, you, you see here, the 15 little games here, right? This is a fraction of how much stuff there is in total. But we can at least see what there is. We can make a decision of what to, what to actually look at. Um, I know a lot of people are going to want me to look at Tommy's Zombies, so that'll be one of them that we'll do now. Tommy's Air Raid? Maybe. Tommy's Gorilla Balls. I guess I'm going to have to review that one, because that one just sounds wrong. <laughs> um, and because of the whole thing with Trek games recently, I guess we can do Tommy's Trek as well. So we'll look at Tommy's Trek, Tommy's Gorilla Balls, and Tommy's Zombies. You know what? I'm going to save the Gorilla Balls for last. <laughs> so, what's the which one's the Trek one? Um, just Trek. Now, I should warn you guys that Tommy's Toys programs are typically very obnoxious in terms of sound effects, so prepare your ears. Actually, that wasn't so bad. Also, weird warp effect. So, yeah, this one was from 86, from the looks of it. So, my name. Mission length. Uh, two? Difficulty level two. By the way, there's no way to skip the, um, PC speaker effects. <laughs> mentioned that I haven't pressed a single key yet. <laughs> so I think the game actually might be running too fast as well. Or it could be in a demo mode. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I've... Something I should explain is that a lot of Tommy's Toys games do things entirely on their own accord. <laughs> so you're not always sure what you're doing. 
And I would like to re-emphasize, I have not pressed a single key yet. This is not a demo mode, this is actual gameplay. Okay, let's actually try to push a key here and see what happens. Um... Let's do long range scan. But yeah, see how it's just continuing to go on its own accord? Um, first of all, I need let's try turning the cycles down, because I got a funny feeling it's actually running too fast here. Okay, so I've turned the cycles down, and everything seems to be a little more normal, maybe. I think that might be like an enemy ship. Or maybe it's us, because it says condition green. So if we go to nav. Course. One to nine, warp factor zero to nine. Um, one to nine? What? I'm not entirely certain what it means by that. I think maybe course is like the direction. So I'm guessing... Oh, you know what? It's probably based on the numeric keypad. So if I wanted to go up... Or actually, let's try going diagonal. So let's say three. And then comma... Warp factor one. No? Oh, well, we just figured out that this was written in basic. Because <laughs> that's what you get from redo from start. So, three comma two? No? Oh, I can only go up to point nine. So, three comma point two? Uh, I don't, I don't think that's the right course. Why is, why is my crew running the ship, starship into a star? Okay, so, I'm gonna have to, I rem as I said, I remember these games being very, very twitchy, <laughs> very do things on their own. So I'm just gonna quit out of this one if I can. There we go. So I'm just going to quit out of this one for now. And we'll try one of the other ones. The thing the thing is, I'm not ready for this, right? <laughs> Playing a Tommy's Toys games means kind of knowing knowing what you're supposed to be doing. So yeah. <laughs> you can see there was chart the only he it was only a small fee for each of these games, but the thing is there was so many of them. This person was definitely going for quantity over quality. And it should be noted that most of them are in um, text mode. Okay, so zombies. Let's see how this one goes. <laughs> Probably not well. Instructions? Yes, please. <laughs> Ever see the 95-minute black-and-white film The Night of the Living Dead, directed by George Romero? The dreaded Night of the Living Dead is now! You are trapped in a remote farmhouse with zombies coming in from the fields in small groups. You must fight them and hold out until dawn. Move control with the four L keys or on the numeric keypad, which means it's probably not actually detecting the arrow keys, but rather the, the numbers. Because as we just saw, this stuff's written in basic. You can move through a door, but that leaves it permanently open. You can move furniture to stall the zombies, but in their blind lust for blood, they will eventually break down any furniture, door, window, or wall. Okay, so this is literally as basic as, it, as, it, as it's saying here. Is you move around with the numeric keypad, and you fire with spacebar. Okay, let's do it. So... Okay. So the goal is just to survive. I mean, I got a funny feeling they're gonna break that door down. But then if I go through a door, it permanently opens it. So, kinda just wanna let them in. Just so they have something to do. But I also don't wanna get my face eaten off immediately. So, there we go. Come in through the window. Oh, this is furniture that I can move. Okay. 
Oh, I'm actually breaking the walls down by doing that. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, they broke down that front door finally. So, can I go like this? Seems legit. This is kind of different from your typical Tommy's Toys product in that there really isn't a lot happening right now. <laughs> eh, screw it, I'm getting bored. Let's just go get eaten. Eat me! Come on, what are you waiting for? Why do they walk around me? <laughs> Don't you want to eat me? Get delicious brains here! Want the brains? Seriously. I thought you zombies wanted to, like, chew my brains out or something. Why you don't, why you don't care? Am I not good enough for you? My brain's not, my brain's not juicy enough? Maybe I have to actually walk into one in order to, in order to trigger a brain eating. No, they just block me. Oh, I see what the algorithm's trying to do. So you have to be surrounded by the zombies before you actually get eaten. That's kind of cool. If that is indeed how it's working. Well, I'm surrounded, but there we go. So I was right about that. They have to surround you before you actually get killed. Okay, let's check out the gorilla balls. This one's gonna be weird, probably. Tommy's gorilla balls. I don't wanna know where they've been. So, F5 for instructions. Have you ever had the feeling you were being pursued and liked it? <laughs> this is not the way to start the instructions! So basically the idea is, survive as long as you can. Just by moving around and getting the balls to run into each other. Got it. Difficulty level, we'll go two again. Oh, jeez. Uh... Okay, so one thing I can say right off the bat, they do kind of aim towards you at f when they first come out, but once the once the balls quote unquote are on the field, they don't they don't track you anymore. So that's kind of interesting. See, this is a game that would have worked better in a graphics mode, but as I said earlier, all this uh, whoop, you have just been gorilla balled. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, all of these games are in text mode, so even the ones that seem like they would work better as a graphics mode are still being done in a text mode. And that kind of makes sense, like, the guy was, was using BASIC to write these things, and BASIC, in its original forms, did not lend itself well to, um, to graphical work. Whoops. Well, that one went considerably worse. So yeah, that was just a taste of the... Wow, that game lasted like five seconds. But yeah, so that was just a taste of what Tommy's Toys games are like. They are very simple, kind of... kind of sporadic. Or, what's the word? Not sporadic. Um, erratic. That's the one I was looking for. Kind of erratic. Usually a lot going on. And there's just a ton of them. Like, I think there's literally like 150 of these or something. So, yeah, I'm hoping to do an ADG on Tommy's Toy Stuff in the future, but it would be a massive undertaking. So, it'd probably be like a 300th episode or something like that. But in any case, that's what this is, so if any of you have any interest in the Tommy's Toys games, I think there's a website that's dedicated to them now, but it's been a while since I've been there, so I don't know if it's still around or if you can even get the games from there or not. But yeah, ju just be warned, if you decide to go down the path of looking into Tommy's Toys games, that is a massive rabbit hole and you're not going to be climbing out very easily. Next up, we have a three-way team dig from Scott Percival, Lenoir, and Felicia Gladson. DOS games backslash adventure backslash deep sea. Actually, I think I know what this might be too. Although there's only the one file here. Deep sea. Is that even spelled right? David Vanderspil. Or Spol? 
It's not Spiel, it's Spoll. So David von der Spoll wishes to thank you for running this program. Last this program does not run under plain DOS. You need Windows on a 286 with one... What? Wait, wait a minute here. Like, normally when you run a program that's intended for DOS and it doesn't work, you get a simple message that says this program is for Microsoft Windows. But when we run this, it's like a special thing for DOS mode, and we actually have to go into Windows to run it properly, but it has like this extra bit of stuff, like this extra bit of programming to the DOS portion beyond just saying, you need Windows. I don't think I've ever run into a program that does that. So, yeah, we'll, let's go see if this works in Windows. Okay, so let's see if we have a little more luck here. We got Deep Sea, Deep Sea. And yeah, it is actually working. <laughs> that is crazy. I have never encountered a game like that, or pro any kind of program like that before, that has its own custom DOS thing if the Windows, if Windows isn't detected. Like, normally you just use the default Windows thing. Although it's interesting that it loaded up two extra icons on the desktop here. So there's like a, a high scores thing here. And a statistics thing. Okay, so... Apparently a grid-based, given the fact that there's a grid lines thing. Other background... Well, I guess we should probably go to help first. Plane. Aim of this game is to bomb Neptune's fleet. Of course, Neptune does the same to you. So, Battleship clone. Or, actually, no. Hmm. Each player has 15 ships. Okay, definitely not Battleship clone. 5 of length 1, 4 of length 2, 3 of... Is it a battle... Okay, this, I'm confused. Maybe this is like a cross between a Battleship clone and something else. Legend on your left shows what the three different colors mean. At the bottom of your screen, you see an icon named Statistics. Click to see how well you're doing. <laughs> Look at these buttons. Okay, I understand. Or hell no, I don't. What happens if I click that? Go sweep the deck, you idiot. Thanks for being condescending, game. Okay, new game. I am me. Why did you not set your OK button as a default button so that I could just hit enter? Uh, what does any of that mean? Um, generate? Also, that's a very we interesting way of doing the generation. So you'll notice... Actually, this is math. Oh, it maximizes. Nice. Okay. So you'll notice when I hit the gener... Oh, that actually started the game. Or no, I can't actually... What? I think I broke the generate button. Let me try rerunning this thing. Okay, so let me... One of the things I can actually comment on, since I have some programming knowledge here, is how the randomization happens to be working right now. So you'll see, every time we click the Generate button, we get a random pattern for our ships. Which makes sense, right? But you'll notice that if we click it rapidly, it only changes once a second. The reason this is happening is because it's clearly seeding itself based on a timer, but it's only using the, the whole value of that timer. So basically what I'm saying is that the seed that determines the randomization here is only changing once a second, which is why if you hit the generate button multiple times in a single second, you get the exact same results, because it's using the exact same seed in that moment. But in any case, uh, okay, we got a pattern. Done. So these are my waters, these are Neptune's waters, and this really is a battleship game. Except with a lot more ships. Oh, and you take an extra turn if you actually hit one. Oh, 
Also, the ships can be diagonal. That's good to know. Although it doesn't tell you when you've actually destroyed a ship, does it? Because it's all based on, um... Yeah, it just seems very... Re also, there's a lot of singles. <laughs> so this game is literally 100% luck. This is like all luck. This is all luck. Yeah, there's like no strategy to this. Although there's probably some kind of rule and effect where you can't have certain ships like right next to each other. Like I couldn't have a single right here because then that would technically make this five long. Like I would imagine there's some kind of rule and effect like that just to keep things sane. Okay, and PC speaker music as well. So yeah, that was Deep Sea. Um, it's different. I give it that. Um, there didn't seem to be any information about registration or anything, so I've got a funny feeling it's probably freeware. It's very weirdly coded, though. Like, just the nature of how everything was working, the fact that I managed to break that generate button by going, by maximizing, like, it's just very unusual the way it's been coded, but like, it clearly works. I can't say it's very engaging. Like, again, you've got so much field to clear, and at the same time, you're trying to get, like, single, single unit ships that can be in diagonal positions. They don't necessarily have to be horizontal or vertical. So, yeah, I can't say I'm a fan of this one. But, eh, at least it's free. And to finish things off today, Matthew Belshans dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash bipbop2. I know exactly what this is. This is bipbop2. This is probably one of the most infamous examples of a breakout clone. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Oh, and it's clearly running too fast. So turn the cycles down. That should be about right. So, this program here, as I said, this is a breakout clone, and it's kind of notorious because it has a sort of evilness to it. You'll see what, maybe you'll see what I mean. But, yeah, I haven't covered this on Down with the DSP, okay. I haven't covered this on ADG yet because I'm kind of afraid to. <laughs> like, that was the first level. First level's not so bad, but this gets interesting, <laughs> to put it mildly. Also, there's kind of the thing going on where it's like, the ball only moves at 45 degree angles. That kind of bugs me, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Actually, because the ball only moves at 45 degree angles, the game gives you a way to deal with that. So, what you can do... I'll demonstrate in a moment here. Is shoot a... Whoops, that was a bad time to demonstrate it. You can shoot a bullet, which deflects the ball. And you have unlimited ammo, so you can use that bullet as many times as you need to. But basically, that's your way of getting around the fact that the ball only moves at 45 degree angles. Also, some people consider that the backgrounds in this game are kind of like background torture. I doesn't. I've seen most of the backgrounds of this game. It doesn't bother me that much, but I can understand how it would bother some people. But yeah, I'm not going to go too in depth into this game right now because I do plan to cover this on ADG at some point. Also, the fact that I keep losing lives doesn't help. It's partly because I, can, I can't see my paddle very well because of where I put my mic. But, um... Yeah, sooner or later I'm going to cover the Bipop games on ADG. Because they are freeware now, all three of them. And we have, um... We have Ross Scott of, of Game Dungeon to thank for that. He actually covered this on one of his um, Game Dungeon videos. And it's got some interesting... Some interesting stuff going on. And as I said, the game's pure evil, so it kind of needs its own its own video. So consider this a taste of what's to come. Just like with the Tommy's Toys thing, we're just, we're just getting that a lot today, it's just tastes of things. By the way, here's some of that background torture I was mentioning. 
you may not want to look at this for very long. <laughs>